What is up YouTube? It is your boy NMR Sports here coming back at you with another MLB video and today we're going to be talking about our free agency grades. Which teams got a lot better? Which teams got a little bit better? Which teams saved the same? And which teams got much much worse or did nothing at all in some cases? Uh, as you can see we're back home in Florida. I had a great time out in California. I didn't make any video. Well I made some videos out there you guys saw. But anyways uh, we'll have some more content coming to you guys soon. I'm going to try to be making at least one video a day, hopefully doing double daily uploads, trying to get all this MLB content out to you guys. I'm going to be doing my top 50 players, division rankings, all sorts of different things. So if you want to stay tuned for MLB content, hit that subscribe button down below, leave a like on this video, and comment down below if you agree with my rankings, my uh, agree with my grades, or if you think I'm way off on somebody, you'll probably disagree with me on your favorite team. You'll probably be able to make a case for some other grades, but... I'm going to share with you guys my grades today. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the video and talk about some off-season grades. Okay, so how we're going to be ranking these today, over here, D is going to be terrible. Basically, you either got worse or you just didn't do anything at all. There's only going to be a few teams that fit this build. Every team did at least a little bit of something to make your team a little bit better, uh, except for a few choice teams, which shall remain nameless for now. C means you basically stayed the same. Maybe you made one or two moves, but not big enough to you know uh catapult you into you know a new tier or anything basically kept the same roster as last year or just made a few little moves to fill in some gap b means you got a little bit better you know didn't make any huge significant addings to your team i don't know if that's the right phrase to use but uh yeah you got a little bit better a of course is gonna mean you got a lot better you maybe moved up into a contender if you were a borderline contender before and then of course s tier is gonna be reserved for the elite few who had amazing off seasons maybe they signed all the free agents they needed to fill in their gaps uh they made some big trades all sorts of different things only a few teams are going to be s tier only a few teams are going to be d tier a lot of teams are going to be taking up that middle spot so we're going to go in order that they're listed here starting off with the new york yankees now, the New York Yankees, I'm going to put in B tier. I think they got a little bit better this offseason. Not much, though. Basically, the reason I think they got better is because they're going to be healthier this year. Luis Severino in that rotation is uh, addition by health, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's going to be a big help to them. They were really lacking in the starting pitching department last year, and I think Cole and Severino is much better than Cole and, you know, whoever else, Jordan Montgomery, Cole, and uh, the other guy they got from the Pirates. Terrible trade, by the way. Uh, obviously, they traded away Gio Rochella, Gary Sanchez. They have a big gap at catcher, but I think defensively they got better, and I think offensively they might have got a little bit better. Obviously, Gio Rochella is a big subtraction from their team, but they did re-sign Anthony Rizzo, so I do think they're going to be a little bit better this season. Uh, not by much, though. They're borderline C tier but I'm going to go with B. I think a lot more people would put them in C, especially Yankees fans, but I think they're still a pretty good team. I'm going to put them in B. Next, we got the Seattle Mariners, and I'm going to go with A tier here. They made a big trade recently with the Cincinnati Reds, of course, getting Jesse Winker and Eugenio Suarez, so that made them a lot better offensively, and their uh, big hole was starting pitching, and they did a little bit of work there by signing Robbie Ray. Now, I don't know if these moves are going to be enough to make them AL West champions. I do think they're definitely fighting for that second place spot, probably fighting for a wild card spot with a few of these other teams. But I do think they got significantly better this or not significantly, but I do think they got a little bit better this offseason. They're getting Ken Giles back as well. So that's a huge not really a free agent signing, but a huge addition to that bullpen. Next, we got the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, I'm going to rank their off. This is ranking their off season. Their off season was a C. They had one addition that I can recall is Corey Kluber. I legitimately don't think they uh, signed it. I don't know. I don't think they signed anybody else. Off the top of my head, I legitimately cannot think of another signing they had outside of Corey Kluber. So, obviously, they're the Tampa Bay Rays. They're going to figure something out. I'm sure they'll turn Shane Baz, Luis Patino, and probably Corey Kluber back into Cy Young candidates. Overall, man, just not a great offseason. The Rays never really have good offseasons, uh, but they still find a way to win every single year. So, don't count them out of the division race, but I don't think they got better. I don't think they got worse. Next, we have the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, this is a tough one. I have them teetering on S tier to A tier. I'm going to go ahead and throw them a bone and say, 
say S tier. I don't think they had the perfect off season, so I might be bumping him down to like the top top of A tier. Uh, obviously, they made a huge trade for Matt Chapman. That's going to help him out huge defensively uh, and a little bit offensively. Obviously, he can hit the uh, he can swing the bat a little bit. They obviously had a great rotation built just now. Kevin Gossman was a huge signing. They signed Yusei Kikuchi. Obviously, they still have Ryu and uh, who's the other guy? Alec Manoa. Uh, I think they signed somebody else. They signed Yimi Garcia to their bullpen. Uh, that is my big flaw with this. The reason I might put them in A tier is because they didn't improve their bullpen. I think that was their biggest weakness. So uh, S tier, borderline S tier, uh, top of A tier, bottom of S tier. That's what I'm going to give them. Next, we got the Miami Marlins. I'm going to go ahead and put them in A tier. They have a great pitching staff right now. Great rotation. A lot of young talent on that team, but they needed some power in that lineup, and they did that with signing Jorge Soler, as well as obviously. Cell Garcia can swing the bat a little bit. So that's going to be a very good duo out there in the corner outfield spots. They definitely do have some more holes to fill, but I do think they got significantly better this offseason. Definitely not S tier, uh, kind of on the bottom end of A tier, but I'm still going to throw them a bone, give them that A tier nod. Next, we have the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm going to go ahead and put them in B tier. I think they got a little bit better, a little bit better. They signed, uh, what's his name? Steven Matz, they signed this offseason. Uh, so that was a pretty good addition to the bottom of their rotation. Other than that, they didn't really do a whole lot, but they have so much young talent on that team, it's hard to say they got worse. I don't think they got worse for sure. I think Steven Matt's a big addition. And other than that, they didn't really have any for big free agent names leaving this roster or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with B here. Uh, could potentially put them in C, but I think Steven Matz makes them a much better rotation. So we'll go ahead and keep them in B tier. Next, we got the Houston Astros, who I'm also going to stick in B tier. I don't really think they made a lot of big moves this offseason, but same thing with the Cardinals. They got a lot of young talent and didn't really lose much this offseason outside of obviously Carlos Correa leaves a pretty big gap there. And uh, you know what? Actually, <clears throat> I just I, I don't know why I put them in B tier, man. I'm going to put them in C tier. They lost Carlos Correa. They lost that Granky. Uh, other than that, they're still a very good team, just like the Rays are, but I don't think they made a lot of moves to make their team better this offseason. Uh, didn't really go after any big names, which, you know, doesn't always work out signing big names to big contracts, but I'm going to go ahead and leave them in C tier for now, unless I think of any th reason to put them, uh, put them in... Yeah, B tier. Next, we got the Atlanta Braves. I think that's a pretty easy S tier right there. Obviously, they made a huge trade for Matty Addy Olsen. It signed him to an eight-year extension. That's going to be a huge addition to their lineup. Fills that gap that Freddie Freeman left, leaving in free agency. Now, do I agree morally with the idea of letting Freddie Freeman walk and trading for a much younger, better hitter? Uh, not better hitter, but more powerful hitter with a lot more of his career ahead of him. Do I like the move from a personnel standpoint or a PR standpoint? I do not. But do I like it from a baseball standpoint? I absolutely love it. Uh, if there's one thing I know as an Angels fan, signing an old first baseman to a long contract never works out. Oh my God, bro. Do you know what it's like to watch Albert Pujols at 40 years old start in your team? It's awful. So anyways, the Braves trading for Matt Olson, Great deal. A++ on that one. Uh, who else did they sign? Eddie Rosario's back with them. They just signed Kenley Jansen to make their bullpen even better. Uh, just all around some great moves this offseason from the Braves. I think they made their team significantly better, which is scary because they won the World Series last year and then they got better. Next, we got the Baltimore Orioles. Uh, it's, it's borderline D or C. I think I'm going to go with C just because they were so bad they couldn't have really gotten worse. Uh, as far as I know, the only signing I can remember them making is Robinson Chirinos. Um, outside of that, they, they couldn't have really gotten any worse. So can I really give them a D? I, I don't think I can. Next, we got the Cleveland Guardians. That is going to be our first member of the D tier. Yeah, the, the Guardians are a... Oh my god, dude. I feel so bad for Guardians fans. They have the third richest owner in all of baseball. He just doesn't spend any money. I think they made literally one signing this offseason. One signing this offseason and when you have a core of jose ramirez fran mill reyes shane bieber zach plesak tristan mckenzie they have so many emmanuel classe they have so many good pitchers they have pretty good offensive pieces to build around all they needed to do was go out and sign somebody and they just refused to spend any money it should I, I i i don't know what to do at this point there has to be a salary floor or something the guardians need to spend some money so absolutely ridiculous easy a member of d tier don't even have to think twice about that one at all 
Next, we got the Colorado Rockies, and I can't put them in C tier uh, because of that Chris Bryant signing. I got to put them in B tier. I can't put them in A tier either because they obviously didn't get much better, but they signed Chris Bryant, which is, you know, a good addition. They got a little bit better, but overall, I, I, I don't... They didn't really do anything else. They lost Trevor Story. They added Chris Bryant. What else do you want me to say, man? Colorado Rockies definitely had a B off season. Next, we got the Detroit Tigers, and I'm going to actually put them in A tier. Huge signings of Javi Baez as well as Eduardo Rodriguez into that rotation. I think they got significantly better, and with all the young talent they have, I think they're going to be really good this year. I don't think they're really a playoff team per se, but uh, especially in that weak division, I think they could definitely make some noise, and I really like these additions. I think they had a very good offseason. Next, we got the Kansas City Royals. They didn't really do a whole lot. I'm going to go ahead and stick them in C tier over here. They didn't get worse. They didn't get that much better. They signed Zach Granke. That was a nice signing for them. Uh, outside of that, they really didn't do much. Um, so they got a lot of young talent. I love Bobby Witt Jr. He's going to be a stud this season. But overall, offseason grade, definitely a C. Next, we got the Milwaukee uh, Brewers. And honestly, this one's really disappointing. I, I don't know. I, I kind of want to put them at the top end of C or the bottom end of B, but man, they really disappointed me this off season. They have one giant glaring gaping hole in a need, and that is offense. They need power, they need hits, they need base runners, they need everything, they need offense. And they just refused to sign anybody. There were so many good options out there. Nick Castellanos was a good option. Jorge Soler was a great option. Kyle Schwarber was a great option. Michael Conforto is still out there. You never know. They could sign Michael Conforto. But as of right now, where it stands, man, C. I, I can't believe a team with Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Josh Hader, uh, that other freaking guy who's Devin Williams... They have such a good bullpen, such a good rotation, and they just can't score any runs. And Christian Yelich has no protection in the lineup, so that's why he sucked so much. It's really hard to see, man. Sorry, I feel for those Brewers fans out there. All right, I'm an Angels fan. I I, I put them in B tier. You can't put them in A tier. You can't put them in C tier. They got a little bit better this offseason. Signed Noah Syndergaard. Uh, the Kurt Suzuki signing almost makes me want to put them in D tier, but let's be realistic. They had a very good... Oh, I don't know, man. They're borderline A tier, if I'm being honest, after those bullpen editions of Ryan Tapera, Aaron Loop, re-signing Rysel Iglesias, and signing Archie Bradley. Those are four really good relievers there. But overall, I don't think they got that much better enough to put them in A tier. I think I'm going to stick them in B. They're definitely at the high end of B tier, though. Next, we got the Oakland A's. Very easy D tier. They got rid of everybody. They're selling the farm. It's really, I don't have to explain that one too much depth. Matt Olson's gone. Matt Chapman's gone. Sean Manaya and Frankie Montas are on their way out. They, they just had a really bad offseason. They did get some good prospects in return, though. So if we're talking prospects, they might be in like B or A. But uh, no, overall, I'm just talking about going into 2022. This offseason didn't help them at all. Obviously, it's more of a future down the line. It's going to help them a lot. Next, we got the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm going to go ahead and put them in A tier just because of how much better their lineup got. But my God, their defense is atrocious. I know everyone's talking about it. And I'm not going to tell you anything you haven't heard already. Just look at their D-War. It's going to be atrocious. It's going to be fun to watch, though, because they're going to put up 10 runs in the first, and then they're going to make five errors in the bottom of the first. And it's going to be a very entertaining team to watch. So if you're looking for some fun, go watch some Phillies games this year. Next, we got the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'm going to put them in C tier because they did make a few moves. Nothing of note. Uh, I believe they brought y uh, Yoshi Chitsugo back. They signed a few pitchers and whatnot. I, I, uh, they made another move recently. I can't remember off the top of my head. But they did make some moves. So they're definitely better than the Guardians. And they didn't trade away their entire team. So they're better than the A's. So got to keep them in that C tier with all these, uh, all these other teams that aren't necessarily uh, didn't get better this season. Next, we got the San Diego Padres, and they're also going to be in C tier. They really didn't do... Uh, I don't know. They did add Luke Voigt. Uh, it's it's very close, borderline C or B. I'll put them in B to give them the benefit of the doubt, because I do think they had a better offseason than all of these teams down here. Uh, adding Luke Voigt was their big addition. Didn't really do a whole lot else, but uh, I do think they got a little bit better with that addition, and that's kind of what B tier is for. Definitely on the low end of B tier, though. Next, we got the Texas Rangers, and honestly, I, I don't know if I want to put them in S, but definitely at the high end of A. 
uh, kind of just below the Blue Jays, in my opinion. Obviously, they added Corey Seager. They added Marcus Semien, two huge additions. They added John Gray to the back of that rotation, which is really nice. Well, I guess it's the front of the rotation because the rest of it's so bad. But uh, I do think it, it was a very, very good offseason. Uh, it definitely wasn't perfect. They could have done more. But, uh, you know... You can't really complain when you have Marcus Semien and Corey Seager. You signed two 200 plus million dollar contracts. Uh, you can't really complain about that. So definitely high end of A, low end of S tier. But uh, they're not really going to be competitive this next year. So that's why I have them in A as opposed to S. If they had assigned a few more pitchers, maybe that would put them in S tier for me. Next, we've got the Boston Red Sox. I'm going to go ahead and put them in A. I think they did a good job adding to their pitching depth. Jake Diekman's a great signing. I love that one. Signed Rich Hill. Uh, they signed somebody else. James Paxton. I don't know when he's going to be back healthy, uh, but he is on that squad at the moment. Uh, they made a few other additions to obviously signing Trevor Story recently, which is nice. I don't know how much better they are this off this uh, going into 2022 compared to last season. I think they honestly might be a little bit worse, but uh, yeah, I think the pitching is a lot better. So that's going to help them out a ton. They still got Nady Evaldi and Chris uh, Sale at the front of that rotation. So I think Rich Hill and James Paxton will fill in nicely there. And then Jake Diekman, I think, is the best reliever in their bullpen right now. So uh, I think the Red Sox got a lot better. Next, we got the Giants. That's going to be our third member of S tier. The Giants had a phenomenal offseason. Carlos Radon, huge signing for them. Jock Peterson adds another lefty bat to that lineup. Brandon Belt came back on his qualifying offer, which is really nice for them. Uh, Anthony Deslafani, they added a lot of pieces to this rotation. I think their bullpen got a little bit better as well. Uh, they have a very deep rotation now. Obviously, uh, what's his name? The guy from the World Series. Logan Webb is their ace. Uh, Carlos Rodon. I love Carlos Rodon's ceiling. I think he could be an elite Cy Young caliber starting pitcher if he could just stay healthy. Alex Cobb was really good for my Angels last season. Anthony DeSlafani is a stud. That's a great one through four right there. They also signed Carlos Martinez to a, uh, a minor league deal. They had some other really good signings. Overall, I just think they had a very good offseason and improved their squad. I think they could definitely compete with the Dodgers again. Try to uh, repeat that NL West crown. Next, we got the, their rival, of course. That is the LA Dodgers. I'm not going to quite put them in S tier. I'm going to keep them in A. There's one thing the Dodgers do well. It is making moves, man. Obviously, Free Freddie Freeman was their big signing this offseason. They also signed some other arms, like uh, they re-signed Clayton Kershaw, which was huge for them. Uh, Shane Green was a big addition to their bullpen. They got guys like Tommy Canely coming back off injury. Uh, so I think they're going to be very, very good this year. I don't think they did enough to quite put them in S tier like the other three teams ahead of them. Definitely the high end of A tier, though. Next, we got the Arizona Diamondbacks. I will be honest, I don't know a single thing the Diamondbacks did this offseason. I they, they definitely blended in with the crowd. They didn't get worse this offseason. If they had a trade at Marte, I might have put them in D tier, but overall, I just think C tier is a good spot for them. No noteworthy moves, that's for sure. Next, we got our fourth and final S tier team. That is the New York Mets. Steve Cohen finally went and flexed on all these owners, showed them how much money he's got. Max Scherzer, Chris Bassett was a huge trade. Starling Marte, uh, Mark Canna might be the most underrated move of the offseason. I think he's an absolute stud. That's a huge addition for them. Uh, they just got significantly better. Those are four huge free agents slash trades they made. Uh, and I think this team is going to be very, very good this year. It's a significantly better than they were last year. And I thought they were going to be good last year. So this is going to be a very scary team to face if you're an NL East fan. Next, we got the Chicago White Sox. Now, I'll be honest, uh, I don't think the White... I feel like I'm missing something big here, that the White Sox did something that I can't remember. All I can remember off the top of my head is that they signed Joe Kelly. Okay, so the White Sox signed Josh Harrison, Joe Kelly, and I believe Larry Garcia came back. Kendall Graveman. I'll be honest, I completely missed that. I didn't know Kendall Graveman signed with them. Yeah, so I think the, the White Sox had a pretty good offseason. They're definitely on the high end of B, maybe an A tier. Uh, I think they signed a big left-handed bat like Michael Conforto that's left over. They could definitely move up to A, uh, but I still think they got some holes they need to fill. Definitely that bullpen is scary, though. I legitimately didn't even see the Kendall Graveman move. That is huge. The White Sox are terrifying right now. 
Uh, just hopefully their offense can get it done and stay healthy this season. Next, we got the Minnesota Twins. I think this might be a hot take to some of you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and put them in A tier. Uh, I mean, I don't know, man. It's tough because they got so much better. Obviously, Carlos Correa, Gio Urshela, Gary Sanchez. Uh, they added a good prospect, I believe, in that deal they made with the Rangers for um, Mitch Garver. Uh, it's... I don't know, man. I, I really don't know. I don't think they improved their pitching enough. That's what it is for me. They did sign Johnny Cueto and trade for Sonny Gray, so that's pretty decent. But I don't know, man. They're they're another team that I'm borderline S tier, but I want to save S tier for the elite of elites, and I think the Twins had a great offseason, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they did enough to make themselves contenders, and that's what I consider uh, an elite offseason. I think the, um, the Braves, the Giants, the Mets, and the Blue Jays all put themselves in World Series contendership through the offseason, and I don't think the Twins did that. That's why I'm going to keep them in A tier. Same reason I put the uh, Rangers in A tier. As a fan, you probably think they're S tier, as a realist, I, I think they're A tier. Next, we got the Cubs. I think the Cubs definitely belong in B tier. I think they made some good moves. Marcus Stroman's a great addition. Saya Suzuki is huge, or could be huge. You never really know uh, with those international free agents if they're going to stick or not. Uh, there's definitely been some really good ones, and there's been some really bad ones. So hopefully Saya Suzuki works out. If he does work out, this definitely will be an A off season for them. Uh, but overall, I think they got a little bit better with the addition of Marcus Stroman, Andrelton Simmons, a few other people. Uh, no one super of note outside of those three. I think they got a little bit better. Now we're down to our final two teams. First, we're going to go with the Cincinnati Reds, their final team in D tier. Uh, what can I say, man? They traded Sonny Gray away. They traded Jesse Winker, Eugenio Suarez away. Uh, they didn't get too much back for it. I mean, the Sonny Gray trade, they did get a good prospect for. Other than that, man, they really didn't get a whole lot done. I just I just think they had a terrible offseason. And if we're going to put three teams in D tier, these are the three teams you want. And then, of course, last but certainly not least, we got the Washington Nationals. I'm going to put them in B tier because I think they got a little bit better. They definitely got a good core developing there. Juan Soto, obviously, the best hitter in baseball for my money. Him and Trout, of course, neck and neck. And they did sign Nelson Cruz, which is why I put them in B tier. I think he makes them a little bit better, which is what B tier, of course, is reserved for. Let's see if I want to make any final adjustments, and then we'll lock it in. This will be our tier list. I do think I'm going to go ahead and I might bump the White Sox up to S tier. Or not to S tier, uh, to A tier real quick. Oh, man, that's close. That's close. I think I think the Sox deserve I think the Sox deserve to be an A tier so that is going to be my final tier list right there let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below do you agree with my picks do you disagree with anything on this list I think it's pretty solid I honestly really like what I made here uh trying to think of anything you guys might disagree with I feel like people are going to give me shit for the Tigers and the Marlins being an A tier and I think that's it. Everything else I don't think is that controversial. Maybe the Twins and Rangers in S tier. But other than that, man, I think I nailed C tier. I think I nailed D tier. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. I love talking with you guys about baseball. Don't forget to subscribe for more MLB content. I'll catch you guys all in the next video.